further ado, webinar so you guys have access to it. So just a friendly reminder that these webinars are going to be recorded throughout the week. They are going to be on our YouTube page, but you also will receive a follow-up email that this webinar was recorded and that you attended the session. Next slide, please. Before we start our presentation, this is just our code of conduct, or I call it the housekeeping or groundkeeping rules for our presentation or throughout the duration of this webinar, is just to make sure that this is a safe space. Um, you guys are joining us on the first session of the webinar week, and this is our best session. So this is gonna be a place where none of these issues would arise, but if they do, this is just our code of conduct. So I'm gonna let you guys read through that, and then just, just be aware that there is a Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. That is where we will answer any questions that you have. This is specifically for you to ask questions about the program. We have great faculty members as well as student ambassador here. So this would be a great time for you to ask that. If it's something related to your application, that unfortunately requires more attention and that will need to be directed to our admission inbox. Next slide, please. So why Northeastern, right? This has to be a reason. There has to be one of the reasons that you applied. So of course we are top ranked R1 research school and we really focus on experiential learning. We're also ranked on co-op, which you will find more about throughout this week because of our Wonder Week session. And just within Northeastern, outside of College of Engineering, there are other colleges within Northeastern University as a whole, and our student body makes up 40,000 students. So although you are part of College of Engineering, you will be working with other students in other schools within Northeastern. Next slide, please. Within Northeastern as well, there is a global campus, right? So although you may be in Boston or you may be in another campus or you may have friends in another campus, we all are all connected and interconnected into one whole big family of Northeastern. And within Northeastern, our focus is usually education, research, and experiential learning. And our newest campus you'll see on here is our newest campus is Miami. So within Northeastern, right, what is our mission and what do we strive for? So it's an academic institution. Our main product is people. Our success is based on the quantity and quality of the people we produce. So something that our Dean says is a good engineer solves problems, a great engineer solves important problems, and a transformative engineer discovers and solves important problems. So that is transpired through the way we work in Northeastern, and that is what we produce. Transformative engineers, students, and faculty within the global impact. And that is what you'll see in the next slide within the department of how great they are and what they do for the students as well as for the university. So without further ado, I'd like to pass it on to Caroline and her team to discuss more about the Department of Bioengineering. All right, good morning or whatever part of the day is where you are. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for the great introduction to Northeastern. So I hope that we have convinced you that Northeastern is a great place to be. And so me and my colleagues next will try to convince you that bioengineering at Northeastern is the best place to be. Okay, so we'll uh, start off with some intro. Um, the newly appointment the department chair is Abram Joy. Uh, my name is Chiara Bellini. I'm an associate professor and I'm the associate chair for research and PhD program. And then I'll let uh, Professor Yegley introduce himself. Hi, I'm Mike Yegley. I'm associate teaching professor and the associate chair for master's education and global operation. Thank you, Mike. Caroline Pridmore, I'm the Academic Operations Manager for the BioE Department, and myself and Senior Business Manager, Manager Esther Cohen provide administrative support for all of our academic programs. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Josh? And then, hello, everyone. I am Josh Pace. I am now a fourth year PhD candidate in the biomedical um, devices and bioimaging track. So I'm really happy to be here with you all, give a little student perspective, and go over everything in the program with you all. Okay, so we are now going to play a uh, video about the um, graduate study environment in bioengineering at Northeastern. Enjoy. Many of our students can create a vaccine, help someone with a disability produce a ventilator. Have a real impact on people with terminal cancer illnesses. 
The remarkable thing about bioengineering is it brings together all of the disciplines of engineering. We offer four different concentrations in which you can really focus on the particular part of bioengineering that you're interested in. Cell and tissue engineering, biomechanics, biomedical devices, and computational or systems biology. This is where bioengineering is moving forward. This is where bioengineering is making greater and greater differences in our world. There are a ton of opportunities at Northeastern to help prepare you for whatever career you want to do. There's a huge ecosystem of biotechnology and bioengineering within Boston. The future of medicine is being invented within five miles of Northeastern University. Many of our students get the opportunity to go into unique research and development environments. The co-op program is amazing. It was one of the reasons why I came here. I did my co-op at Wushi Aptek and we tried to optimize affinity selection and also try to do QC reports for consumers and then do research for them. Definitely helped to create the picture of how the industry works. We give students the time and the freedom to really understand what's going on in the world of bioengineering. Most of our classes are very, very interactive. They're very, very project-based, and they're very, very research-based. One of the exciting things about bioengineering is the degree of interdisciplinary interactions. Virtually every laboratory in the department interfaces, collaborates with other laboratories, whether they're mechanical engineering, physics, biology, or chemical engineering. The experiential nature of working in a research lab is that you come in in the morning and you're driving your own day. My job as a PI is to make it so that they can come in and generate an idea and just be able to go for it. So they're constantly being able to try new things, test their hypotheses, talk to people around them. My research focuses on a medicinal plant that makes a chemotherapy drug. So my research is aiming at understanding the molecular mechanisms of how the plant makes this chemo drug in order to genetically engineer a plant that makes more. Our faculty are driven to answer difficult questions. Our students learn skill sets that will allow them to contribute to those answers. And they go out and they work in industry. They work in academia. They work in research labs and they are making an impact every single day. Um, so as you saw on the video, uh, we are located right in the center of Boston. Um, our campus, uh, we are very lucky um, to have a beautiful campus in the middle of the city, close to everything. Um, but we are also located in uh, this lovely building with the spiral staircase, the Interdisciplinary Science and Engineering Complex, which is a great place where not only bioengineering departments, but uh, departments from other College of Engineering uh, units, and as well as College of Science get to collaborate together. So it makes for a really lovely environment for our faculty and for our students as well. In Boston, we also have the benefit of being surrounded by biotechnology, pharmaceutical companies, um, hospitals, everything that you could ask for if you are a bioengineer, which makes us extremely well situated. Our faculty have amazing connections with industry in the local area, which means that the, uh, the research and everything that we do is informed by um, what is going on in the field, which makes us um, very cutting edge and on, on really uh, up to speed with what is going on. We are also ranked number one in internships and co-ops on the US News and World Report. And this really is um, our unique selling point at Northeastern, our co-op program we're very pr proud of. And those connections not only with our faculty, but also for students to go uh, and do co-ops and internships as a part of their program. So co-ops are integrated into the program, um, which really gives our students an edge when they're graduating because they already have industry experience under their belt. And our Graduate Student Council, I'll hand over to Josh to talk about because he is the president of our Graduate Student Council. Awesome. Thank you very much, Caroline. So yeah, the, the Graduate Student Council, the GSC, is a group of students, both PhD students and master's students that just work um, to, to, to provide both social events, but also just build the community as well as just get more resources for students or provide the department with feedback on what's going right, what's maybe needs some improvement, so all that sort of stuff. Um, we help the department plan the annual research symposium that's happening in June this year. We have a couple of different mentoring programs. So that's a, a first year mentoring program right when you come in 
as well as when you're just about to leave. Um, we have an alumni mentoring program now. And so we just kind of build the community, improve um, the uh, student resources and all that fun stuff. We're extremely proud of our uh, graduate students. Uh, we have a really open dialogue between students and staff and faculty to make sure that the program really is the best that it can be. Um, so we really upli uplift student voice and encourage um, that active feedback on the program um, and, and make changes in response to what the students need. So across the university, we also have just a great set of support um, offices for students. So whatever you need, there is support for. So co-op coordinators who help uh, students interested in completing a co-op, uh, teaching um, on professional skills, helping with your resume and applications, uh, as well as providing one-on-one -on -one career advising. For international students, there is the Office of Global uh, Services, which helps not only um, I-20s and things getting onto the program, but also things like CPT um, when you're on your program and doing your internships and OPT when you graduate. The student services for academic advisors, uh, career design and employer engagement to help you along the way. Um, so basically anything that you need support for, there is an office to help you. And with that, I'll hand over to Dr. Bellini. All right, I'm going to briefly introduce the uh, PhD program in bioengineering. Next slide, please. So one of our pride is that um, we are uh, we're able to merge a rigorous core curriculum uh, that is provides you with the fundamental in bioengineering science with a uh, more flexible set of courses uh, that can be sourced not only uh, from the bioengineering department but from any other department within in uh, the university and the goal is for you to be able to uh, gather all the knowledge that uh, you would need to succeed in such an interdisciplinary program. Next slide please. So the program requirement vary depending on uh, whether you come in with a bachelor degree in a relevant field or a master degree in a relevant field. And uh, Students that are accepted directly from their undergrad, they are required to complete 32 credits. Each of our courses is four semester hours. So that uh, means approximately um, eight courses, uh, which uh, also means that if you take two courses a year uh, in the fall and spring semester, you are uh, done with your classes in the first couple of years, and then uh, you can focus on your uh, research. Uh, there are core courses um, that include principal bioengineering, medical physiology, and math methods. Uh, then you can choose up to two technical um, electives that are restricted, and those depend on the concentration, which we will uh, discuss in a second. And then three courses that are unrestricted, and those are really the one that you can uh, pick from any graduate level course in the uh, university that is related to uh, your research. Then if you come in with a master degree in a, a bioengineering related field, then you are required to only um, complete 16 credits, um, which means that you most likely will be done with your classes during the first year. Uh, there are only two core courses, principal of engineering and math methods, and then all the um, technical elective to others uh, that you can choose from. All students attend seminars. We have departmental seminar on Wednesday, uh, which are uh, faculty um, mostly um, that we invite. So get speaker and sometime our own faculty give seminars, student seminars. Um, in your second and fourth year, there is what we call a uh, work in progress on Friday um, that we encourage all students to attend. We provide food. There is pizza for everybody. And it's uh, a fun way to get to know your peers and their research um, and form collaboration. Um, and then the um, once you're done with all your classes, then research and dissertations are the courses that you're going to be um, signing up for to maintain your full uh, status, full um, student status. So we, you heard this concentration in the video from our uh, former chair, Professor Lee Makowski. Um, 
we have changed the names through the years. And so uh, these are the current names, biomedical devices and bioimaging. Uh, which Josh is part of, um, biomechanics and mechanobiology. This is the track that I am part of, molecular cell and tissue engineering. That's definitely our most popular uh, system, synthetic and computational uh, bioengineering, which is a growing cutting edge uh, research track. And so um, the uh, this, this research area or concentration will not appear on your degree, but is a way that we can um, help you to design and find the courses that are most relevant to your research. And so this is the most updated um, research map where uh, that is, is uh, present on our website. Um, it has the contact of um, the chair, Professor Ibrinjoy, mine and, and um, Professor Yegley's contact for PhD and uh, master's. I don't think uh, Carol, your contact is here, uh, but um, is definitely on the website. Um, and we, uh, you can see all the names of all of our faculty uh, divided by, by uh, concentration and research area. And something that I would really like to um, emphasizes that many of us um, span different concentration just because of the interdisciplinarity of the program. So um, I'm primarily in the mechanobiology track, but um, I source students and my students belong to several different tracks. And it's really the idea that um, you're going to be able to uh, create, even in your own group, interdisciplinary uh, competences to um, really push our field forward. And I'll pass it on to Mike. Thanks, Kiara. Uh, I'll tell you all a little bit about the bioengineering master's program now. Uh, so why would you do this? Why would you do a master's in bioengineering at Northeastern University? It is, first off, a fantastic way to advance your career. Um, master's students often do co-ops, which can help you um, learn a lot about uh, the industrial landscape. Um, also, you can do research. We'll talk about how to opportunities to do research on a further slide. Um, and uh, if you're interested, there's also a pathway for master's graduates to enter the PhD program at Northeastern as well. Okay, so just like the PhD program, you'll take 32 semester hours of credits. Um, but there's no way to cut that down to 16 uh, unless you're plus one. Um, so you need a minimum cumulative GPA of three to graduate. We have two core courses. Those are principles of bioengineering and medical physiology. Medical physiology is um, a course that covers the physics, chemistry, mathematical underpinnings of the different systems of the body. It's a fantastic course and everybody takes it. And then uh, after you get those courses under your belt, you'll move on to your concentration courses. The concentrations are the same in name as for the PhD now, uh, thanks to much effort. Um, so I won't repeat those, but we do uh, keep those concentrations the same because that's where our faculty expertise lies um, in the department. Uh, so you'll take two or three required courses for each concentration. That's depending on the concentration. Some have two, some have three. And then, then the remainder of your courses will be taken um, from a list of electives. Or you can also proceed through the program by doing a master's project or a master's project followed up by a thesis. I believe the next slide has some more information on that. Yeah, so a project is where you start. Whether you're going to do a thesis or not, you start with the project. The project is a research project done under the supervision and advising of one of our research faculty. And this takes the place of one of your electives. So it would take four credits of coursework is what it would count for. Um, to finish the project, you, well, well, you would start by scoping out a project with one of our uh, researchers here. Um, then you would write a report and submit that to the advisor. Um, 
Then if you want to continue on, you can convert that into a thesis. Uh, to do a thesis, you find a thesis advisor, usually the same person you did your project with, um, and uh, you would follow up with another class, another four credit class of research. And at the end of that, you uh, would write a master's thesis and then submit and defend it to a master's committee. Um, uh, so in this case, the difference between um, project and thesis is that thesis is twice as much research. You have a com an official committee that you have a big presentation in front of at the end, um, and then you're you're on the thesis track. So there's three ways again to get through the program. One is all coursework. The second would be the project, and the third would be the thesis. Um, a great way to find a thesis advisor if you're interested in doing hands-on research in the lab um, is in your Principles of Bioengineering course. So one of the core courses you take, the one credit class, a whole bunch of different professors will come in and talk to you about the research they do. That's a great time to um, be, you know, perhaps interested in, in the research they're discussing. And you can make um, personal interactions with with professors in that class. Doesn't have to be limited to that class. You are, you know, of course, feel free to go onto our website and see what research each of our uh, faculty members is doing. Um, and if that interests you, uh, do feel free to contact them. But the um, thesis and the projects are largely driven by student interest. All right, so these are um, absolutely not paid endorsements for our program from our students here. Uh, I'll give you a second to read them, uh, but a lot of students will um, have enjoyed the flexibility in the program, uh, largely in that you get to really take a deep dive into the area that most interests you in our concentrations. A lot of students really enjoy that. Um, uh, the hands-on research in the projects and the thesis are a fantastic thing to do and um, going on co-ops as well are, are a really big help. So um, I hope you avail yourselves of these um, different options uh, in our master's program. All right, I'll throw it back over to Josh Pace. Awesome. Thanks, Dr. Yeagley. So yeah, so now I'm just going to talk a little bit about the Graduate Student Ambassadors, which are a group of students that um, are in every program um, within the College of Engineering. And so we're able to help with a variety of things, mostly with student questions um, related to classes, getting started with housing, all that fun stuff. Um, I put some QR codes on the screen, as you can see, for contacting us. Um, and so I recommend scanning those. And then kind of in the following slides, I'll get into more specifics about what we can help you with and what we'll direct you to other places for. All righty, so yes, this is a very helpful slide because overall, kind of the rule of thumb is anything more student related to student life, courses, housing, anything like that, um, we can provide you with insights because we've been through it. Um, and then the more specific um, kind of technical questions about your application, about international questions, anything like that. Um, we can provide you like the, with the websites or the email addresses for those offices, but we'll directly direct you to the right people to help you. Alrighty. And so we have a variety of different um, ways to get in contact. I believe one of uh, the QR codes that I shared on the previous slide was an, uh, our website. Um, but if, if it wasn't, then you just Google uh, Northeastern COE grad ambassadors um, and our website will appear um, information about contacting us there um, is is available um, we also have a, our own YouTube channel um, and then the email address at the bottom of the screen is a great way also to contact so we try to provide a, a few different ways of getting in touch with us so it's it's easy for everyone Alrighty, and then one in addition to the courses that are great here at Northeastern, the research opportunities, all of that other um, kind of stuff is still here. What I mean by that is like the clubs and kind of the extracurriculars that you can get involved in to kind of help build your professional and personal skills. And so um, there's bioengineering specific clubs, but also if you're kind of 
you know, interested in, you know, doing um, kind of electric car racing or anything like that. There's a variety of different um, kind of organizations. You know, there's a Society for Women Engineers. Um, all of that sort of stuff is here at Northeastern for you. And then, yeah, just kind of a smattering of all of our socials and, and get in contact with us if you have any questions. I'll hand it back over to Caroline. Thank you, Ren. I think, and that concludes the bioengineering section um, of this. We'll open up to Q and A uh, momentarily, um, and Harsh will walk you through our uh, next steps. Perfect. Thank you. So, just as you saw in the next steps, can I get a next step slide, please? So, this is what I know. A lot of the Q and A questions are coming in is a mix of all this. So, for the students that have been accepted to Northeastern, this is your roadmap. So, first, we'd like to congratulate you on your acceptance. Moving forward, your admissions portal or your, your application portal is where all communication happens on your next steps. So you definitely want to first look at your admissions letter, accept your offer and make your $100 deposit. Once you do that, that is when your portal will start flooding in the sense of if you're an international student, that is when you could apply for an I-20. Um, you also need to submit your health records. Also, you would activate your Northeastern account. So these are how the next steps will work. I like Josh has mentioned, there are tons of resources that you can connect with student ambassadors. If you are looking for housing opportunities or where you should start looking for housing, so definitely use our ambassadors or your fellow colleagues for assistance. Next slide, please. So for students that are asking questions about deadlines and that you could still apply, yes, you could still apply to the school. June 1st is our, um, for the fall 2024, is our last deadline where you could apply for international students outside of the U.S. August 1st is for domestic students within the U.S. and Canada. And then July 1st is for international students inside U.S. and Canada. I know, and I'm going to stress this, and I can't stress this enough, please do not wait until the deadline. Um, our faculty are constantly rigorously looking at applications and looking at it as a holistic approach. So please just don't think that they're just looking at grades. They're looking at your application from all parts of that you submit it. So please don't wait until June 1st. You can submit your application even as of today if you wanted to. Our application portal is still open for the fall of 2024. Next slide, please. And then, so what does our application require, right? So for students that ask for application fee waiver code, this is the application fee waiver code you would use, which is apply COE 2024. We require two letters of recommendation, unofficial transcripts, statement of purpose. We do require a resume, GREs. Um, we don't require GREs, so we um, you could just click off no GREs. For students that ask if we do accept dual lingos, we do. So these are the... Um, English proficiency exams we do um, allow, which is IELTS, TOEFL, and Duolingo. In the chat box, I could put in the scores that are a requirement, but for TOEFL, you do need a 79 and higher. For IELTS, you need a 6.5 and higher. And for Duolingo, you need 105 and higher. So those are just numbers you want to be mindful about. So once again, that is the fee waiver code you want to use. So take a screenshot. Take, use your phones, just be very mindful. It is case sensitive. So if you need to type it the way you see it, and then these are just the instructions on how you would submit your um, fee waiver code. This is only for new applicants. If you're already an applicant that should have submitted your application, you cannot use this fee waiver code. The system would not accept it, unfortunately. Next slide, please. So like always, you stay in touch with us. We are available around the clock. Our ambassadors are also available around the clock. But for any specific application questions that have come in, you want to email our admissions inbox, which is coe-gradadmissions at northeastern.edu. That is where we can answer specific questions regarding scholarships, the status of your application, or anything along those lines. And without that, we're going to open it up for the Q&A piece of the session. I know one popular question was scholarships, um, specifically for PhD, as well as for MS. All MS students are reviewed for a Dean scholarship when you apply to the university. So it is automatic. For PhD students, our PhD degrees are funded. Um, it is very competitive and they are limited seats because of just the way the PhD program is, but they are funded and 
so that's a different portion that's different than what an MS student would get. Maybe I can answer a couple of questions sure. about how uh, do you get in touch with a potential advisor for the, the bio PhD program. And so I really strongly encourage you to uh, go to our website and uh, select um, the core faculty in our department. And each of us, uh, or most of us have a website, uh, go to their website, uh, look what kind of research they do, search uh, their scientific publication. And once you have a good idea of what, um, of which faculty you're interested, uh, email them and trying to get a uh, meeting with them and try to um, interact with them um, over uh, over Zoom, over whatever uh, whatever mean you you decide. And if you are um, going to conferences and you happen to see any of our faculty, please do not hesitate to interact with them. Um, that is one of the best way to uh, get uh, a faculty, get attention on your application. So for students that that have a question about switching from departments, that's a little bit more tricky, um, especially if you're a PhD student because of how funding is, is how funding works. But you're more than welcome to connect with faculty um, through email, as well as just what you're doing today is joining these sessions. And this is a good way to know which track or which um, concentration you prefer versus it's bioengineering or a different one. And then we also have rec previous recorded sessions. So you could do that. I also would advise you could connect with Josh. He's here. So you could ask specific bioengineering PhD questions as well for any in, like for any insecurities you may have regarding the program. The one student thing I'll say about that is chemical engineering department's great, but bio is a lot cooler. But yeah. I'll second. <laughs> Uh, there's a question about um, MS to PhD, if students are in the midst of completing a master's and are interested in switching to PhD, um, yes, that does happen frequently. If you are on our master's program and say starting a project or, or starting discussions, those discussions sometimes do turn into, well, why don't you just complete the PhD? You're a great fit for this um, faculty member's lab. So yes, that is a very common way to, um, to get involved um, and yes, yeah, switch to the PhD. And again, I can't stress enough how it's on you to be proactive and show how far good you are during your like master project, master thesis, uh, to show how good of a and how good of a citizen in the lab uh, of that specific faculty member you are uh, to get the transition from a master to PhD. In the chat box, I'm just going to put our admissions email address. So for students that have specific application questions, you could direct them to that inbox. And the fee waiver, I believe, is just for College of Engineering programs. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so how many years is needed for the PhD? There's really not a, a set answer. I would say on average, a PhD lasts approximately five years, but we have students that graduate in less, especially if they come in with a master. Um, a few have taken a little longer, but that's not the rule. So I would say five years or less. So I see a question in the chat about what makes someone a BioE co-op employer. Um, and that is that they offer a co-op job on our online system. So we have um, dedicated full-time co-op faculty 
that work with you to secure co-op positions. There's also a job board similar to Indeed or LinkedIn jobs or something like that on uh, that is only for Northeastern students where the co-op jobs are um, placed. Those are competitive jobs and they're not exclusive to any one area. Uh, so you can apply to any co-op job that you want. Um, and it is essentially the same process as obtaining a, a full-time position in which you write a resume, submit it, interview, and et cetera. That's very good practice for uh, actually securing a full-time position because it, it's the same thing. Speaking of co-op, we are going to host a specific co-op session, which is going to be hosted on Friday. So just as you received an email to attend the bioengineering webinar, you could sign up for the co-op webinar, which is gonna be hosted on Friday at the same time. And that specifically covers all of co-op and it's only related to co-op. So highly recommend if you have a lot of co-op or questions regarding just like how it works and how the layout for co-op works. almost at the top of the hour. So if students have more specific application questions, like I've stated, you want to email our admissions inbox. But at this point in time, I think we've cleaned out all of the questions that have come in. So I thank the amazing bioengineering team for that. And if you guys have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out to myself or our current student ambassadors that we have that are available to answer any questions relating to like the way their campus life is, the programs, or some of the course structure that they've taken or that you have some interest in. So once again, thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you. Yeah.